Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got a new contender for ARM-based laptop processors. That is MediaTek with their new Companio 910 processor. And today we're taking a look at one that's inside of this Chromebook from Lenovo. This is their brand new Chromebook Plus 14. And I was very surprised with the performance that I saw out of this. And of course, the battery life that you get when you've got an ARM-based processor on board. So we're gonna take a look and see how this processor performs on this new Chromebook in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. This is not a sponsored review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this new Chromebook is all about. Now the price point on this starts at $649. The one we're looking at today is $749 because it does have more storage than the base model, but the performance on this one or the lower end one are the same. Now this is a Chromebook Plus, and right now if you buy a Chromebook Plus, Google will give you a full year of their Gemini Pro service. So you get all the AI stuff, but you also get two terabytes of storage that you can use across all of your Google platforms. That includes Google Photos and Google Drive. So you do get a good amount of value, I think, out of these, at least for the first year. And then after that, their subscription fees kick in. Now, this one, as I mentioned, is powered by a MediaTek Companio Ultra 910 processor. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. As Chromebooks go, this one is very well equipped. As you saw there, it does have a touch display, so you can interact with the screen with your fingers if you want. And of course, you can play some of those Android games with the rather large touch surface here. This is a 14-inch display running at 1920 by 1200. This is an OLED. It covers 100% of DCI-P3, and it runs at a maximum of 400 nits of brightness with a 60 hertz refresh rate. It does look very nice. And although it doesn't have a ton of resolution at 14 inches, a 1080p class display like this looks just fine. And of course, you're running with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which works much better for browsing and document editing. Now it has a 1440p webcam built in. The video quality is decent enough for conference calls. And it also has some of the Chromebook Plus onboard AI features, which will give you the blurred backgrounds and the background replacement across the operating system in any app that uses the webcam. That's one of the many little features that they include in this Chromebook Plus tier. Onboard AI, in my opinion, is not great. So the image quality is okay, but not anything that's going to be all that mind blowing, but it is there if you want to make use of that. There's also a manual shutter here on the top of the webcam so you can disable the camera when you're not using it. Now the weight on this one comes in at 2.58 pounds or 1.17 kilograms. It's not all that heavy. This is completely fanless because of that efficient processor on board. So it doesn't get all that hot nor does it make all that much noise. You do need though to hold down the keyboard deck to lift up the display. It does though have a fingerprint reader for very quickly getting into your Chromebook once you're logged into it. So that was nice to see. Build quality feels fine. It's mostly metal, but I did notice the keyboard deck has a good amount of flex to it given the lightweight metals that they chose for this. So not the greatest feel here, especially for something that's a little more premium. So just be aware of that. But the keyboard itself feels pretty nice. This is your standard Lenovo layout here. The key, keys are really nicely spaced and large enough for typing. It is backlit as well. The key travel is not as deep as I would like, but it's passable for a more portable, lightweight Chromebook. The trackpad here feels fine, so all in from an input perspective. I was very pleased with the audio quality out of this as well. Probably one of the better sounding Chromebooks I've reviewed over the years. This does have Atmos certification. You get a nice envelopment of audio when you're listening to it and you're in the right spot. And the sound quality has a good range to it out of the speakers, better than I expected. It's not audiophile quality. It doesn't have deep bass, but it's got a good range of sound for music and movies and TV shows. But of course, connecting headphones is always the best way to go. As far as ports are concerned, you don't get many on here but you do have a USB-C port here on the left. This is a full service port, so this does power in, video out, and data devices, but it is USB 3.2, not a USB 4. You have a full-size USB-A port over here, so if you have a keyboard or a mouse, I would attach it there. 
You do have a headphone jack, which is nice to see. And then you've got another full service USB-C port here on the right hand side. Now I did connect this up to external displays a little bit earlier, and I was able to get two separate independent displays plus the onboard display to all work together. However, I was not seeing more than 4K 30 out of the external displays. I did connect up a different ad adapter and I got 60 hertz out of one and 30 out of the other. So I think 1080p or 1440p is probably the max you'll see for two separate independent displays running at 60 frames per second, but you can drive two displays plus keep your laptop display open as another independent monitor if you want. But of note here, these are only five gigabit per second each. So you don't get the 10 or the 40 gigabit per second ports that we see on most modern laptops. It does though have Wi-Fi 7 and I was able to connect up to my Wi-Fi access point in the ceiling here. And I got pretty much gigabit speeds, give or take, out to my internet provider. So if you do have a gigabit provider, you should be able to make use of that bandwidth with just the onboard Wi-Fi, provided you've got a decent enough access point with minimal interference. Now, battery life on this is exceptional. Every bit as good as what you see with Qualcomm Windows-based laptops and of course the Apple Silicon Max. So you should be able to get north of 13 hours in my testing. I would keep the display brightness down a bit. The OLED does consume some power, but if you're sticking to the types of things that people use Chromebooks for, I think you're going to get a lot of battery longevity out of this. And of course, it is completely silent and solid state as its processor does not require a fan to operate. So why don't we take a look now and see how this performs. We'll start with some basic stuff and work our way up from there. I'm going to begin though with some web browsing. And what we're gonna do is visit the nasa.gov homepage as you can see, everything jumps up on the screen here very, very quickly. We can jump around to different parts of the web page, and it's all very, very fast and snappy. It feels a lot like a mainstream Intel or AMD-based PC here, but we're using a MediaTek Companio processor. These chips have never been known to be this snappy before, but now we're seeing some real performance out of this. That was quite impressive. We'll begin a video here as well. And all in, it is a very nicely performing laptop for doing the types of things that people do on Chromebooks. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 25, which is very competitive with scores that we've seen out of the newest Qualcomm Snapdragon processors on the Windows side. You can also see how this one stacks up against an Intel-based Chromebook Plus from Samsung that we looked at last year. And a little bit earlier, I tested out its YouTube performance with a 4K60 video from my channel. As you can see here, we are not getting any drop frames at all. So its video playback performance here is quite good. One caution I have for you though, especially if you are a consumer of streaming media, is to not use the apps for your favorite service like Netflix. And the reason is, is that Netflix DRM does not support Chromebooks properly. And it's been going on like this for many years now. So you only get standard definition video out of this high def display when you have the Netflix app loaded up. But if you use the Netflix website at netflix.com, everything looks as it should at the full resolution of the display. So I would stick to the web browser for consuming your favorite streaming sites until this DRM issue gets resolved with Chromebooks. But like I said, it's been going on now for a number of years and has yet to be resolved. I'm gonna throw another thing at this because they do have some built-in AI features, two of them that are unique to this particular machine. One is involving a bunch of tabs that I'm going to open up here. So we'll see how quickly it can load all, all them up at once. So I've got 17 tabs here I'm going to open. And as you can see, they're all popping up right now from scratch. And I've got a mix here of gaming sites, some space stuff, and some news sites. They're all uh, along the top here in different tabs. I am not a heavy tab user, but I've got a lot of friends who are. And one of the things that this will do, if you hit the F4 key here, is make suggestions to organize all the tabs that you have loaded up. So down below here, it's suggesting that I put all of my gaming news into its own window here. And what it's done is it's pulled out all of the gaming sites that I had in tabs. So I'm going to have it do that. And now it's given me a virtual desktop and has broken out those tabs. So now I just have the video game news up here. And then if I jump back, I've got all the other stuff 
still loaded up in here. It's a little hit or miss though, because I do have some news sites on here. When I tested this earlier, it had both an option for gaming news and regular news. It's not seeing the news sites now. There is a guide on Google support pages about this. You need at least four different tabs loaded of a similar type of category, and that's what it'll use to separate things out. Now, another feature that is specific to this Chromebook is the ability to do some on-device AI image editing. And what I've got here is an image of me from one of my recent videos. And what I do with these images is I have a Mac app called Pixelmator pull me out from the background and I use my image that was pulled out for part of my thumbnails that I put up on YouTube. And so on the Mac, it's a one-click thing. Nine times out of 10, it gets it perfect or really close to perfect. And it does all of that on device. Let's see if this can do the same. So what I'm gonna do here is click on this image editing button. And when I do that, I've got some options here. I can remove the background, expand it, make a sticker. I'm going to go and remove the background. And what it wants me to do is draw out what I want to keep. And so I'm just gonna use my finger here to trace around my head and go around here and kind of close the loop. I've tried this in a few different iterations. I found this example to work the best. I can maybe fill in a little bit here in the middle as well so it has a better clue as to what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to click on Remove Background. And what it will do is it'll chew on that for a minute and then pull me out. As you can see though, it's not perfect and I still have to do additional touch-ups here. So this feature does need to cook a little bit longer, I think, but it is something that they are working on. But there are some other helpful AI features that are part of Chromebook Plus devices that are integrated into the Chrome operating system. So for example, on any web page, if you right click, you can have it summarize the article for you and then provide some input for you to ask it questions. So as you can see here, this is a blog post that I've got up. It gives me a pretty helpful summary of what I'm about to read. And then I can ask it questions about uh, anything in the article. So I could say, how hard is it to get a switch to on this article about the switch? And what it's going to do is look at the article itself and give me the answer from the article so I don't have to go sift through it. So that feature is called Help Me Read. And conversely, they have a feature called Help Me Write. So anytime you're on a page with a form to fill out, if you scroll down to the form area and right click, it will let you generate some text. So for example, I've got this form here. It's only 250 characters. So I want to request to become an astronaut in less than 250 characters. Let's see if it figures that out. So what I'm gonna do here is submit that. It's going to chew on it for a second and then it's giving me my text and I can go ahead here and insert it. And there you go, it's got it all worked out for you. So you have these features baked into the OS when you've got a Chromebook Plus. Now, like most Chromebooks, this has the ability to install apps from the Google Play Store that are normally run on Android tablets and phones. And of course, you got the big touch screen here. Let's take a look at a couple of games that I installed a little bit earlier to see how they perform. So this game I'm running here is called Withering Waves. And this is an Android game, one of these free to play deals. It's about 25 gigabytes in size when you have it all installed. Right now I've got it running in its balanced preset, which is basically the medium settings for this game. I did find the higher quality setting was a bit laggy on here. I don't know if that's the GPU so much as it is just how the Android games run on the Chrome OS platform. Now this is a touchscreen game, so of course I could use my fingers here and use it like a tablet, but one of the features that they've got baked into Android on Chromebook Plus is the ability to map controls. And what I did here is I added a joystick WASD to the screen in this position so that when I hit, let me hit done here, when I hit my W key here, he can start walking and I can still use the uh, on-screen display to move things around. It's not ideal, <laughs> it's not the best interface. So I think you'll probably wanna connect up a game controller which are supported here quite nicely on the Android side, but not all Android games support game controllers. But still, the graphics here look nice, the game performs well, and I think if you've got a few Android games you wanna play, especially those that support external controllers, I think you'll have a good time with those. But emulation seems to run pretty nicely on here. I've got the Android version of the Dolphin emulator running currently on the laptop. I do have my Xbox controller connected. It works over Bluetooth, but my battery was dead, so I figured I'd just plug it in. And the performance on this looks pretty good. I'm able to get 100% performance out of Wave Race here. Other GameCube games I tried were also running well. And we still have some room here to do a little better. So I could probably get this running at 
a higher resolution, for example, versus the default that it's currently on. So I think from an emulation standpoint, this is pretty good. And certainly the Android games run okay on it as well. Now I did run the 3D Mark Wildlife test on this, which runs across multiple platforms. And there I got a score of 18,498 on the regular version of that test and 5,284 on the extreme version. And as you can see here, this thing holds up quite well against its competition, including one of the newer Snapdragon processors. So I think the performance here is definitely adequate for light gaming and emulation. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux support. Most Chromebooks have the ability to install the Linux development environment. And when you enable this in the settings, you get yourself a command prompt here. You can run all of your command-based applications like my favorite text editor, Nano but you can also run graphical applications. This is LibreOffice, and it's got a spreadsheet, a word processor, basically everything you'd find in Microsoft Office you'll find here. It is doing some funky stuff with the window resizing, but beyond that, the applications here run just fine. And this is one of the fun things about Chromebooks that not many people are aware of, that you've got this really nice Linux environment here to do a lot more than what typically Chrome OS lets you do. And all of this stuff is safely sandboxed, so it can't really interfere with the operation on the Chromebook side. So if you've got a kid that is trying to learn programming, you can get them one of these things. They've got a full suite of development applications that they can install from the command line here, but it does keep everything nicely separated. And if you are using Gemini to help you with your code, you can take that code, drop it into your command prompt here, or do some Python programming or whatever, and you've got I think a very fun environment in which to learn development. So good stuff here on the Chromebook side. Now this does have an expiration date for support. All Chromebooks do. This one has 10 years of support from the time that I'm shooting this video. So this expires in June of 2035. So when you get to that point 10 years from now, What'll happen is the Chromebook will still work, but you can't install any new security updates to it, but it will be supported with security updates through 2035. So that'll do it for this Chromebook. I'm very impressed with the performance out of this MediaTek processor. I'm actually interested to see if they might be able to get it working on the Windows side. It definitely feels as quick as some of those Snapdragon machines we were looking at not too long ago. So good stuff here, lots of new choices coming into the marketplace, and let me know what you thought down in the comments section. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.